If you're using rooms in your design, it's possible that you've come across a few DRC errors if you've either moved components inside or outside of certain rooms. The properties of the room is what governs where the associated components should be placed, and we'll be diving into this. We already have two rooms that exist in this design, and they will likely need to house components from a particular component class. If we double click on either room, we can access its properties. Each room also contains a room definition rule, and the properties set here will also apply to that rule. So there's nothing yet defined as far as which components should be in this room. But we can change the query to target a specific component class, and in our case, it'll be a group of components from the DC to DC component class. You'll also notice that this room is set to keep components inside of it. So if there's any components from the DC component class that are currently not in that room, we'll see some design errors as shown with these components here. We can quickly resolve this issue by placing the associated components back into the proper room. Although it's most common to use rooms to keep components inside of them, they can also be used to keep components out. Any components that are touching that room will give you an error, where you would then need to adjust the size of the room or move the violating components. Of course, these were a few basic examples of how components are associated to rooms, but the room definition also allows us to target components using the same query language that we use for our design rules. For example, we can target components on the bottom layer, with a height lesser than 1mm tall, that will be allowed to be placed in this room. You'll then notice that the number of violations will be significantly reduced. Feel free to experiment with the room definitions to see how you and your team can benefit from using rooms to control component placement. 